Hey guys, it's Virginia. I want to welcome you to the Work Table Wednesday Live that we're doing tonight on Dream in Color 72207. Now, one of the posts that I made earlier today referenced that we're going to be casing, which if you don't know what casing means, it's an, um, gosh, I've drawn a blank. I think it's an, it's not an alliteration. It's a, uh, um, oh my gosh. Anyway, I've lost it. Anyway, so C-A-S-E. So that stands for copy and share everything or copy, amend, supplement everything. But the bottom line is casing is something that is used around the world in the craft around the crafting world and frankly it's used in the rest of the world as well um, the the situation with casing anytime you do it whether it's borrowing someone's um, work uh, someone's previous work is that you give credit for it uh, you don't ever want to take credit for it uh, as a as an original design uh, or original research, obviously, if you're doing something else like that. Um, and so you use that as a starting point for your creativity. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what it was before we got started into it. So I've got a little bit after 830. And so let me once again welcome you officially. So officially, welcome to Work Table Wednesday. This is Virginia Porta. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! I'm located in Central Arkansas and I love doing these types of videos and sharing my love for with craft of crafting with other people. Uh, I like to do in person when it's available, when it's an option, and then I have really enjoyed getting to do some virtual crafting throughout the pandemic. So Without any further delay, let me go ahead and get started. Now, on the screen, I mean, on the table, you'll see my logo, my website, dreamincolor72207.com. And if you choose to order anything this month, please use this workshop code, A as in alpha, 6H as in hurricane, K as in Katrina, M as in Mohawk, Q as in Queen, J as in Jersey 9. And if you order off of the workshop code this month, you'll get a little thank you gift from me. Now that's if your order is um, less than $100. If you're close to $100, send me an email. I'd love to visit with you about ways to get savings on your order. And obviously, if you're anywhere higher than $150 or even higher than that, that's a great time to consider um, hosting your own event. Now, one other thing I want to say about September is that it is the second half of Sale Abration, which is the semi-annual special event from Stampin' Up! And in that situation, every time you order at least $50 in merchandise, and that would be before taxes and before shipping and handling, you earn um, some free items that can be redeemed from our celebration brochure. This includes stamps, dies, and paper. Those are the things that can be earned. Now, let me also mention that that's true and that you can order from any of our active catalogs and earn those freebies. So this is something that, this is a great time in September to uh, make some investments in your stash. So. All right, let's go on and talk about casing. And so casing, like I said, is copy and share everything. And you might say, well, I don't, I don't know what that means. I don't, I don't, let me give an example. So let me show you a series of cards um, on my table. And we can talk about some common elements that might help you understand the concept of casing. So you might recognize these two cards on the left from our Olympics video but what the commonality is is that this card has 
a, a full vertical element over here. This card has a full vertical element, as does this card has a full vertical element. Both of these cards are double matted. This one has um, paper that I stamped myself, matted on red. This one is straight white. I did not put it on as another layer. And then we both have the embellishment cluster here. Now the difference in this and these two cards, obviously, this one just says thanks down the left side. This one says hello. And then you've got the sentiment friend stamped here on an oval punch. And so let me compare that to this card, which again, I showed you the vertical element here. This has a punched element here behind it. It still has the three embellishments, but it's done a little bit more um, to compare this. You know, we've talked at times about playing um, casing uno, which means you take a card, you start with a card design and um, you can either pick up the stamp set or the color scheme or the general design of the card and go from there so you can you can pick something up and duplicate it okay so that's one set of, of cased items here's another one and these might have been cased as well and so what i want you to see again are this this two are uh, these cards as well have this vertical element obviously it's wider this one is stamped. This one is designer series paper. This is designer series paper. All three have a larger element on the front of the card. And this one has uh, this special paper here and the sentiment. This, the sentiment and the stamped image are together. And then this is labeled uh, the oval punch and it's much smaller. But you can see similarities here. And so, you know, this is a great thing to do if you are working on a project and let's say you're getting ready to design, to design some cards and you get stumped and you're like, well, I don't know what to do. So let me show you what I did with this one. This is from our work table Wednesday, a couple, maybe th three weeks ago, piece of masking tape. And all I did with this one is I have the card base and then I did a, a mat and then I took the designer series paper and um, I trimmed it because I knew that I wanted it to be smaller than the mat. I also know that I wanted there to be a gap here. And so all I did was simply trim it at an angle. And what you'll notice is that if you're going to do it like this and you want opposite colors, for instance, this is the back of this page. You have to cut two of these at identical locations so that when you flip it over, the angles match. On this card, I use the same concept of slicing it at an angle. And then I simply stacked these two pieces of paper and then stamped behind it. So these are somewhat cased, but not really. And they were used, like I said, it's really used more of a jumping off point. So then tonight, the last three cards we're going to look at are going to be our, our inspiration for our first two, or for the two cards we're making tonight. So while these don't look very similar, there are some similarities. First of all, both of these cards you see have this vertical element of the designer series paper down it. And everything is, these two are both matted on top of something else with the sentiment here. This one is very similar in that it's a very simple card, but you have this, this die cut piece in the center and you have a very similar type approach. So let's take this pink card, the one that's Flirty Flamingo, and let's start and use that as our inspiration for our card tonight. So the card, or excuse me, the stamp set I'm going to be using with this card is going to be Friends Are Like Seashells. Now we've used this before. You've seen me use this in my swap. This is an excellent set. Let me get the glare so it's not quite so bad. Uh, this is a great set because you have all of the shell images and you also have these sentiments. So all we're, what we're going to do is I'm going to copy this pretty closely but with some differences. <clears throat> I have opted to use a very vanilla thick card base 
as opposed to the flirty flamingo and i have cut the designer series paper which is the 2020 2022 designer series paper in colors and i've cut this piece to match this banner right here and then i've cut a piece of this misty moonlight to match the dsp and that will go there and then we'll stamp right here on this piece of very vanilla so let's get to stamping and tonight instead of having the big table and the big all of that stuff around me on the table i've moved my work around and i all i have here is my cushion matte cushion from my stamparatus and a piece of the stamparatus work paper now let me take this little piece of masking tape and put it back on here actually this is a piece of washi tape you all know how i use washi tape all the time and all i'm going to do is tape that down and that so that the fan won't fly my paper everywhere so i'm going to go with a monochromatic approach tonight and so that's another thing that you could actually use that as your jumping off point to make that your your inspiration so at this point i'm going to start with the large conch shell i think this is the conch shell and um, i'm going to go ahead and stamp it full strength on this small card now one of the things that you can do when you're using monochromatic work is that you can often stamp off and get some different depths of your color and so that's what i've got what i've done there now i think i'm going to do one more of these and just put it in over here just to kind of help weight that now in addition to that before i get too far gone i do want to put the sentiment in and we're going to use the happy birthday to my beautiful friend that's from the shells are like friends are like seashells and let's just take that sentiment and stamp it right here full strength hey barb nice to see you so we have that and we're going to put that aside let's go ahead and wipe that off so i don't get ink on my table all right and now we're going to take some of the smaller images actually i'm going to pick up my sand dollar because that's the next largest image and i'm going to go ahead and put it in full strength right here but i'm also going to do some off you know some partial less than full strength let's put that right there and this is such a large image that I don't know that this is the, you know, you can get an idea of what you're doing. Now, something that you can also do is when you're stamping something like this, if you are going to make several of these cards using this general motif, don't cut your paper down so small. You can't, oh, that is kind of crooked. Hmm so you can cut your paper to a larger piece and do all of your random stamping at one time and then get it all onto the card so let's go ahead and add that shell and since we stamped the full image the full strength image and not off and none of it was off the page we can go ahead and do our second generation stamp there and then let's see let's go ahead and do one more like that and then i'm going to go ahead and stamp off and i'm not going to do that i think i'm going to use the seashell i mean the uh, starfish okay so let's keep going and we'll add the starfish in right there and i'm going to go ahead and stamp this in second so that i'm stamped off that way this image behind the text is a little bit lighter and it doesn't create quite so much conflict and then let's see is there one other place that that's not going to fit in there let me grab one other small shell image and that's one thing that's really nice about this set is that there are multiple um, sizes of the shell images so especially if you're going to do this type of random stamping that if you really especially want one like this to help fill in some of your space you've got room to add these in different places so we're going to add that there and then we'll just put 
that right there. Now I've got the, here it is. And so like I said, we're doing, oh, thanks Barb. So this is the sea, I guess it's seaweed, sea grass, whatever you want to call it off of the stamp set. I'm going to use this as a filler because this is a good sort of organic-ish shape. And so I'm just going to put that in in different places and stamp over in a couple of places and just and remember to stamp off so that you don't necessarily have stuff sitting just to the edge of your card and let's put this one more piece down here like that so all right now we're going to put our ink up so that i don't end up getting it all over creation because that's what I do best. Okay, so now let's take our adhesive and let's assemble our card. So we'll use some Stampin' C. Um, I think we're going to use dimensionals right here. We'll do some dimensionals. And so anybody that's watching, if you would type in a comment that tells me where you're what that you're watching. I'd love to, to know who's watching our video tonight. That just makes me feel better. And I see, Barb, that you are. And so let's take our dimensionals off. You know, these dimensionals are great. They're not, uh, they're not too thick. You know, you can buy some of these foam adhesives at the, at the, uh, the big stores, but sometimes they're kind of big, kind of thick. So we've trimmed this so that it only has a very small border around it. So we've matted that. Now we'll take our stamp and seal and whoopsie, get our four corners. Well, it really is very aggressive tonight. But before we do that, I almost forgot to put this down. So I think that I'm going to go with the grid pattern instead of the, the stripes because we're going to look at the stripes on the next card. So. so let's just put this over here. Well, thank you, Barb. I really have gotten to where I enjoy doing them. It's just, it's a fun thing to do, which I really never would have thought I would have enjoyed this quite so much. But I do. All right, so now... We'll put this on here and basically center it on the card. And then the last piece that we're going to add to this is a piece of this fine art ribbon. Now this is from the annual catalog. This is um, gold and sort of a, an ecru color. Almost, it almost looks like it's a, a burlap, but I don't think it is quite that tough. So let's cut that piece. And I think what we'll do is just tie a tiny little bow. Now, if you know me, you know this is not necessarily my strong suit. Um, I can thread and put thread through buttons till I'm blue in the face, but I cannot tie the bows. So a lot of times when Elizabeth and I are crafting together, I do her buttons if she's using buttons with the string through them. And then I convince her oh so easily, sometimes easily, sometimes not so much, to uh, tie my bows for me. So I'm trying to keep this so that it doesn't go completely cattywampus. So this is kind of a large bow, so we're gonna we're gonna tighten it up because it's it's almost too big for the card like it is right now. So we're gonna keep fiddling with it and getting a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. And what I think you can do, what you can see is that, you know, our stereotyping is that we are going to generally send this pink card because it's got flowers and it's pink. We're going to use that and we're going to send it to a female. Well, this same card with just a few modifications can easily be, easily be sent either to a male or a female you know not that you have to not not that the stereotypes matter but it's just that sometimes it uh, it seems to come into play at times so let's 
I'm going to take some, I'm recycling, not recycling, I'm finally using up some of my paper pumpkins. Yes, yeah, she's playing with cookies, and um, I have yet to see anything of anything she's accomplished. So I'm not so certain. Uh, I've, I've asked her specifically for some pictures uh, for Elizabeth from her cookie con. I know I have some of the... She and I made cookies earlier this spring, and I, I guess I froze about half of them because the cookies, the batch that she and I use, or the recipe that we use, makes so much. And so I actually have cookies in my freezer, and that may be my bedtime snack tonight. I'm not sure. Okay, so very quickly, we've, got, we've made this card over, and... So you can see the two cards and their and the basics and how they compare to each other. All right, so we're going to do one more just to show you how easy this is to do. Because, I mean, really, this has been very simple. You have to admit, this has been a pretty simple inspiration. And this is a great thing to do, like I say, when you're... Um, working on a project and let's say you're just stumped and you you have something let's say you have a stamp set that you really want to use but you can't figure out what you want to do with it so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to pick up the delicate dahlia again we've used this on the work table wednesdays before the delicate i use the paper pumpkin glue spots all the time yeah i use them some so thank you um, I have to give, by the way, Barb, I just saw your comment. I have to give credit. This was a card that Cindy Griffin on our team made for one of our swaps. And I think it's just beautiful. I love it. Cindy makes such beautiful cards. And so um, every time I, if I, if I copy one of her designs, I know I have a winner. So, okay. So I'm going to use the Delicate Dahlias. And I mentioned earlier, this is a celebration stamp set. This is one that you can earn with a $50 purchase. And we are going to be using the smaller floral images and the leaf images. This is the card that we will use as our inspiration. So let me get my inks out and get the card base that I've put together. So on this, I have a, a basic white card base, basic thick basic white card. And I have cut the Bumblebee Designer Series paper to four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So it just is a little bit smaller than the card front. And then I've also taken this and cut it at one inch by five and a half. So just like the black and white polka dots, this sets uh, goes from edge to edge. Now, to be a little, to sort of be monochromatic, I've decided to take the Bumblebee cardstock and use that as my matting. And then I'm going to use, this is the Shimmer White cardstock that we're going to use to do our stamping. So let's move this aside for a minute and let's grab our images. So we've got the Bumblebee ink and this is a distinctive ink or a distinctive stamp set. So you can see by the way that the pixelation is on the images that they are provide some automatic shading which is really really nice uh, when you're trying to do something and and you want to make sure that your image i'm going to set this aside for a second because i want to come back and pick up my leaf right here so i've got the images and then I'm going to stamp this right here. Now, one of the things that um, I'm doing is that I did, um, I don't like what I've done here. I'm going to flip this over because we know that every sheet of paper has two sides. So I'm going to start over with my leaves because I don't like the where my leaves are on this. So let's put our leaves um, right here. Now we'll come back with our flowers. Sorry about that. Okay. 
Now, what you've seen on the um, on my stamp, my acrylic block, I have actually put the distinctive stamp on one side, and then I've lined up what the outline is so that I know that I can generally line that up. Now, this stamp set is particularly easy. It's much easier than some of our other ones to get the outlines, but you can see all I'm doing is coming back and it's just sort of reinforcing the outline of the flower. And um, this is much more dramatic if you say use the if you stamp off the distinctive portion and do it as a second generation stamp. But alas, that's not on today's agenda. So let's grab our old olive and bring that over here and we'll stamp around our leaves and get those outlined. I hope my head's not getting in the shot. So we've got that. Now, while we have our old olive out, I'm gonna grab this sentiment which is you inspire me and this one is a little it feels like it's not straight so remember what I've told you in the past if you have a sentiment that's long and it feels like it might not be perfectly straight drop it on your work table like this so that the stamped Im the image side is down and your block side is up and then if you just let it sit there for a minute it will go back to its original shape so that you know you're picking up the um, stamped the the sentiment in the right shape so we're just going to put this at the bottom okay now let's stack up i've got a little leaning tower over here of acrylic blocks with my dirty stamps on them so i have to stop and wash all my stamps when we get finished okay so now, just like before, let's construct this and um, we'll use the, whatever this is, stamp and seal. Okay. Now, uh, something I want to mention is that I am going to be doing my monthly card class later this month. I've got to double check the dates because if I say it out loud, I will tell you the wrong date. But I will be doing a monthly card class later this month. And I hope that Barb, you, and anybody else that would watch this, perhaps on the replay, will be able to join me. Uh, we will have a prize drawing at the monthly card class. So it will pay to stick around and to be involved and to comment during the class so I'm going to go ahead and put this down with the stamp and seal and let's just again and this one I'm not so much centering I'm going to use this outer boundary as my center point and the one thing about this great DSP is that it's easier to center it vertically because you've got those vertical elements that you can work against now let's come back and use our dimensionals and you see there's nothing wrong with stamping on the other side of the paper that's what we've always said is every sheet of paper has two sides and thank goodness for that because more often than not we need to use the second side and there we go and we will put this just like this and I will have to say that this card and the first card, this panel, um, these panels are not exactly the same size, but they're very similar. Okay, oopsie, I don't want to get a bumble. I don't want a bumblebee. Okay, so let's open this up. These are the matte acrylic dots or matte enamel dots. These are awesome. These are out of the holiday catalog the, the august december miniature cattle mini catalog so we're going to put in i think i'm going to put oh that's kind of big i think i'm going to go with a smaller one and you know that whole the three things the three images or the three 
embellishments. So we'll do that, we'll do that, and I'm going to go ahead and pick up a tiny one. I'm going to pick up a dark tiny one maybe. There we go. I put that up there. So now you have this card. Let's put these. And something I've, I've learned, I think I learned this from Rebecca Fox. When you get your embellishments from your orders, instead of opening and closing the plastic packaging on this sticky side, which gives me fits sometimes, all I did was run a scissor up this and then you can just open it and slide it out and get it. I found sometimes when you push them in and out of your bags, it ends up knocking stuff off. So that makes it much easier to get in and out. And then you just, I set this aside in a stack um, for the, for my storage. So here's the comparison of these two cards. This one's got a little bit more bling. It's missing one of its sequins. But you can see that this is a little bit more subtle. Um, but it's just a different, it's a different take on the same card. So tonight, here are, the, here are the four cards that we use. The two inspirations and the two cards we made. So remember that when you are working on a project, if you're, if you're designing a card or just want to use a particular stamp set and you're not sure what to do with it always go back to one of your favorite stamp if you can go back to one of your favorite card designs or even find card designs online that's another thing that we can we do and you can start there and use that as a jumping off point and then use that inspiration so i want to thank you guys for joining me tonight i appreciate it um, please if you have not already join my vip group and you'll get notifications for the next time i go live and uh, if you want to join my mailing list, I think there's an opt-in there. If not, you can always DM me your email address. And always, you know, like the video, share it, share it with your friends, follow our page. And then always check out my other channels on Pinterest, YouTube, and other Facebook. All right. You all have a great rest of the week. I hope the heat breaks and we start getting some cooler weather. Um, I'm excited. I just found out I got tickets for the Razorback game Saturday, so I'm getting excited. So, all right. Y'all have a great week. Take care, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.